Many different processes result in samples which may be analysed by small angle neutron scattering, and these are often modelled computationally, such as molecular dynamic simulations, whose output can produce nuclear scattering patterns, or micromagnetic simulations, which can produce magnetisation fields and hence magnetic scattering. It is highly desirable to be able to predict the scattering pattern from a sample. Especially when magnetisation is involved, the results can be quite complicated, and SASU contains a dedicated tool to predicting such patterns, given a known structure, created manually, programmatically, or as the output of a simulation. In this video, we will first take a brief look at the theory behind magnetic small angle neutron scattering, and then look at how we can use the generic scattering calculator to predict scattering intensity patterns. In order to carry out magnetic small angle neutron scattering, we can add three components to the standard beamline a polarizer, a spin flipper, and an analyzer. These allow us to choose the polarization of neutrons entering the sample and filter out only those we wish to analyze after the sample. We will only consider the case when both polarizations are aligned on the same axis. Choosing the input and output polarization allows us to consider four intensity patterns called cross sections. We can also consider various combinations of these cross sections. Sometimes particular features only show up in certain cross sections, such as in the magnetic sphere example later, because interactions with magnetized samples can flip the polarization of the neutrons. Much as the nuclear scattering length density controls nuclear scattering, the magnetization of the sample controls the magnetic scattering. In fact, multiplying the magnetization by a fixed constant, BH, we obtain a comparable quantity known as the magnetic scattering length density. In fact, only the component of this orthogonal to the neutron wave vector is important, and the Fourier transform of this is known as the Halpern-Johnson vector. By defining a suitable coordinate system, equations can be derived for many circumstances, although the two most common are where the polarisation direction is either perpendicular or parallel to the beamline. For example, when the polarisation vector is perpendicular to the beamline, we can define a Cartesian coordinate system, with x along the beamline axis, z along the polarisation vector, and y orthogonal to both of these. This then allows us to derive equations, shown here, for each of the cross sections in terms of the components of the Halpern-Johnson vector in the XYZ coordinate system. As an example, consider a sphere. With purely nuclear scattering, we get the expected circularly symmetric pattern. If we introduce a symmetry-breaking magnetization aligned perpendicularly to the beam, we also gain an angular anisotropy in the scattering pattern. If we have a sample, and we know or can estimate its scattering length densities, we should be able to calculate the expected scattering intensity pattern. The generic scattering calculator is a GUI interface in SASCU, located in the tool menu, which allows these intensities to be easily calculated and displayed. It uses the Python backend to perform these scattering calculations. The output is displayed both as an image and moved to the SASCU Data Explorer panel where it can be compared with standard models or other data. For more complex operations, user-written Python scripts can interface with the backend to produce results the GUI could not. An example of this to calculate orientational averages is shown later. The calculator itself uses three different coordinate systems, although for simple cases, these can be ignored as they default to being aligned. The beamline coordinate uppercase u, v and w, are static and define the qx, qy plane of the beamline. The environment coordinates, lowercase u, v, w, describe the sample environment and it is within these coordinates that the polarisation vector is set. The sample coordinates, x, y and z, describe the rotation of the sample to the environment. These are especially useful if the description of a sample is at a different orientation to that desired within the beamline, or to perform rocking scans. The scattering calculator has several panels which control different aspects of the calculator. The first panel describes the location and type of the data files. 
nuclear and magnetic scattering length densities can be loaded from files into the calculator and enabled or disabled by the checkboxes. The draw button creates a visual representation of the data for the user, including magnetization vectors. The second panel describes the sample itself, the number of pixels or elements is given, and then the average values of the scattering length densities. If no data file has been enabled for a scattering length density, then a constant value can be given by the user, which is applied to all pixels or elements. For data in a rectangular grid, the number of nodes describes the number of pixels in each axis, and the step size describes the spacing between each pixel. These values can also be manually entered if no data files have been loaded, providing a very basic set of default data, useful mainly for testing purposes. The Draw Points button draws the data points without any magnetization arrows, which can slow down the standard draw functionality for larger files. The Save SLD data button allows the current data to be saved into an SLD file, a SASView format, provided it is a regular grid. The coordinate systems information allows the user to view and edit each of the coordinate systems using your pitch and roll angles. This is useful when a data file has been created in a specific orientation and the scattering pattern may be desired for the sample with a different rotation. The GUI also shows an interactive 3D view of the coordinate systems for reference. The current version shown here contains an implementation in matplotlib, although this is subject to change in the future. The next panel describes parameters of the sample environment. The total volume is included here because it can be altered by the user to provide a correction factor for the intensity. The four parameters describing the magnetic beamline setup only become editable when a magnetic scattering length density is present, either due to a magnetic data file or a manually entered value. In SASView, the extent of polarisation is described by values which give the fraction of neutrons polarised up. What has been notated as the plus plus cross section in previous slides is given here as upfrac in and upfrac out, both equal to zero, which will be seen in the examples later. The Q range panel allows the detector settings to be entered, describing the range of Q values and the resolution of the detector. For some types of data, non magnetic data on a regular grid, SASView can also calculate the orientational average using the Debye formula which can be set here. The Compute button is used to begin the calculation, and the Reset button resets the GUI to its initial settings. In order to be of use, the calculator needs to know the scattering length densities of the sample. The easiest way to specify these is as a regular rectangular grid of pixels, each with a constant nuclear and magnetic scattering length density. This is the data type of the default data in the calculator, primarily useful for testing purposes, and can also be loaded from three different file types. The SLD file format is custom for SASView, and allows the real space position of any pixel to be stored, as well as the nuclear and magnetic scattering length densities and the volume of each pixel. While not strictly enforced by SASView, all SLD files should be a regular, rectangular grid of pixels. Irregular grids can be handled by VTK files, as discussed later. The OMF format allows only a magnetization vector to be stored. While the OMF format allows for both regular and irregular grids, SASView can only read in regular OMF files. The PDB file format specifies the position of atoms in space, and each of these is approximated by a pixel of the appropriate volume. Only nuclear scattering length densities can be obtained from these files. Any combination of these files can be loaded as the nuclear and magnetic scattering length density data, provided that they agree on the real space positions of the pixels. As a simple example of the calculator, we can use the default data, which describes a 60 by 60 by 60 angstrom cube as 10 by 10 by 10 pixels. This default is useful for testing the functionality of the calculator and confirming that it conforms to analytical results. Pressing Compute provides the expected 2D scattering pattern, which can be compared to the analytical results produced by the fitting calculator. For grid type data, such as this, with only a nuclear component, we can also perform an orientational average using the Debye formula. 
this produces the following 1D curve, which can again be compared to the analytical result. The low discretization of the sample, only 10 by 10 by 10 pixels, leads to a deviation between the analytical and simulated results, especially at higher Q values. By increasing the resolution, we see a much closer fit. For example, with 20 by 20 by 20 pixels, the following patterns are seen. For any more complex situations, we need to use a file to store the scattering length density data. For example, we could create an SLD file which describes the cylinder as shown. Note that the default unit of SATU is angstroms. The cylinder has a radius of 20 angstroms and a length of 40 angstroms. It has equal nuclear and magnetic scattering length densities of 1 times 10 to the minus 6 per angstrom squared, with the magnetic scattering length density aligned along the cylinder's axis, along the positive z direction. This SLD file lists the positions of each pixel, the nuclear and magnetic scattering length densities, but not the volume of each pixel, since it is constant across the grid and can be worked out by the calculator. The allowed SLD file formats are found in the documentation. This SLD file consists of a 50 by 50 by 50 pixel simulation box, ranging from minus 35 to plus 35 angstroms in each direction. The output of the draw functionality can be seen in the right corner. The yellow pixels are those with zero scattering length density. These do not significantly slow down the program because they are stripped out prior to calculation. We first of all consider an unmagnetized cylinder by loading the data file into the nuclear data tab. Note that the magnetic scattering length density text boxes are still editable to allow a constant value to be specified. While it was easiest to generate this cylinder aligned with the axes, we may wish to know the scattering pattern at a different angle, which we can easily alter in the sample coordinates panel. Here, for example, the axis of the cylinder is at 60 degrees to the W axis. We can calculate the expected scattering pattern as before, as well as the output from the analytical result of the fitting calculator. The fitting tool also allows us to plot the residuals and find the chi-squared value for this fit, which comes out very low, as we would expect for such a low discretization. By loading in the magnetic portion of the file, we can also see the results for a magnetised cylinder. Choosing the polarisation to be along the U-axis, we can see the following result which again can be compared to the analytical model, and the residuals plotted. Note here that we are examining the plus plus cross section, denoted by 0, 0 for up frac in and up frac out. At other times, it may be easier to represent the scattering length densities on an irregular grid, such as output from a finite element simulation. This can allow areas of little interest to be described with much less detail, saving computation time. Additionally, for low resolution samples, this avoids discretization errors, although at the cost of a more time intensive algorithm. SASFU supports these grid types in unstructured grid datasets of legacy VTK files, the file format of the Visualization Toolkit, which is supported by many other programs such as NetGen, which was used to generate the files used here. A simple example, and hence one with an analytical result, is a uniform sphere, with a constant magnetisation perpendicular to the beamline. The ratio of the nuclear and magnetic scattering length densities is denoted by R, and the shape of the scattering pattern, particularly in the plus-plus cross-section, is heavily influenced by this value, in which a cross-shaped anisotropy appears for R values less than unity. We will perform both a quantitative and qualitative comparison of these results from the scattering calculator and the analytical result. As before, we load in both the nuclear and magnetic components of the file and then compute the scattering pattern. Qualitatively, we see a very close match between the analytical results and the plots produced by SASFU. To do an analytical comparison, we take the percentage error of each pixel and find the maximum and average value for each plot. 
As can be seen, these errors are relatively low. In fact, the main contributions to the error come from the points where the structure factor goes to zero. At these points, even small errors can become highly significant to the final result, giving large relative errors. Another use of the coordinate interface is the ability to generate rocking curves. By creating small rotations about a central axis, a series of diffraction images can be observed, from which a rocking curve can be generated. Let's consider again the uniformly magnetised sphere, with a constant magnetic scattering length density in the U direction in beamline coordinates. We will also set the nuclear scattering length density to zero relative to the solvent. The polarisation will be along the W axis, pointing towards the target. The important part of the magnetisation is the perpendicular component of the Q vector, which we can plot as a vector field. This is non-zero, but lies in the UV plane. So if we examine the plus-plus cross-section, where only the component of this parallel to the polarisation matters, we get no scattering intensity. Now let's rotate the environment about the V-axis, a yaw in the environment coordinates. Now the M-perpendicular vector has shifted, and importantly, there is now a non-zero component in the polarisation direction. As a result, as the yaw angle increases, we should see a magnetic scattering pattern begin to appear. The following images show exactly that behaviour. From these, a rocking curve for a particular point or region could be calculated. For more complicated tasks, the GUI may not have the required functionality. In this case, a Python script can be used to interface with the back end of the calculator. A brief overview of this interface is provided in the documentation. One example use is the calculation of an orientational average for a structure. The Debye average is only available in the GUI for non-magnetic grid type data. In this case, the script creates a discretization of 3D rotation space and averages the desired model over it. Here, we're using the default data of the calculator and comparing the results to the inbuilt Debye average functionality. As can be seen, for reasonable numbers of samples, the results become very close, with the divergences occurring at higher Q values. As before, both of these methods are limited by the resolution of the model. The true value is substantially different from both, and we can improve our simulation by using a finer resolution grid. This script could easily be altered to use a magnetic model or element type data, in which case it would not be possible to use a Debye average and scripting the calculator is the only way to calculate an orientational average. While the speed of the calculator depends on the computer on which it is being run, we can gain a rough estimate and a good idea of the relative speed. These tests were run on a desktop PC, and the calculations were carried out over a 50 by 50 grid of Q-space. The grid type data runs relatively fast, as seen in these lower four cases. The non-magnetic data, in red and blue, runs significantly faster than the magnetic and nuclear data, orange and purple. Installing the Python package number, which pre-compiles Python code and parallelizes certain operations, dramatically improves the non-magnetic pixels, and provides a reasonable improvement to the speed for nuclear and magnetic pixels. Element type data runs significantly slower for the same number of elements as pixels. If the data can be processed as grid type data without significantly increasing the number of pixels, it is worthwhile time-wise. Element type data is best used when large regions of the space have very little variation, and so the number of elements is low compared to the number of pixels that would be needed to cover the same space without significant discretization errors. More information about the generic scattering calculator and the SASFU program as a whole can be found at the link shown on the screen.